Oh, hello there, and welcome to the second in our series of tutorial videos regarding how to set up and use a mill to create a part. In today's video, we're going to spend some time looking at uh, the early tools and procedures you'll need to use in order to get set up and create your part, uh, having already gone through how to read and convert blueprints so that you can communicate in decimal language with your machine. So first, let's talk about some of the basics. A few of the key components to this process include getting your piece into the vise, getting a collet to hold your edge finder, and then finally, finding your X and Y values, otherwise known as your zeros or edges, for your part. Now, if you don't have superpowers like me, you're gonna have to do this the old fashioned way, so follow along and I'll show you the step-by-step -step procedure. It might seem absurdly obvious at first, the idea of putting a part into a vise in order to hold it in place. But when it comes to using a mill, we have other considerations to keep in mind. Because if we just do it this way, it's very possible that if we're using a facing tool uh, in the form of an end mill, or if we're using a bit, we could push our piece down and then mess everything up. So instead, we'll want to go to our parallels. These are parts that are inserted into the vise at the very, and we wanna make sure we keep them at the far edge of the vise on both sides because they create a lip for the part to sit on top of while we're operating. However, there's an additional consideration that we want to keep in mind. You can even see here I've got tiny little metal shavings in the way. This actually can create a problem. When we're working on a machine that operates in the thousands of inches, even a tiny little burr can create a problem. So we want to make sure that we take the time to clean everything out including the bottom of the vise itself before we put our parallels in. Once we feel we've got everything clean, both parallels and the inside of the vise as well, we're ready to put those parallels in place, making sure that they're flush against the sides of the vise, and then we can put our, our part in there. Make sure it's good and tight. All right, even my superhuman strength cannot budge this out of the vise. And once we have our part in the vise, the next important thing to do is to find the edges of our part because our machine operates on the idea that it's at the very corner of our part. It uses that to orient itself so that it knows where we're trying to drill holes or where we're trying to face off material. So uh, that means we're going to use what's called an edge finder. It's a little piece of material that's going to spin just like a bit would in our mill. And when it touches the edge of our material, it's going to visibly knock over just a little bit like you see here. And we'll know that we've hit the edge. And that's going to help us find, aha, what's our X value and what's our Y value for zero. So first I need to show you how do we actually get this thing uh, put into the machine so it's ready to operate. Well, you're gonna need an additional tool known as a collet. In this case, we need a half inch collet because this is a half inch diameter end mill. So uh, this is a good lesson in why it's very important to keep track of where you put your tools because it's taken me uh, a little, I'm, I'm in here after class right now, and it's taken me a while to hunt down this half inch collet because whoever had been using it previously had not put it back where it belonged. So just something to keep in mind as a, a little bonus advice. So I'll simply insert, my edge finder into my collet, making sure to leave some space, as you see here. Okay, and then I'm going to slip the collet into the mill like so. I'm going to have to rotate it to get it to stick in there because, aha, there's a little groove uh, that it needs to find in order to slide all the way up in there. So I'm gonna make sure to hold it firmly all the way in there, and then I'm going to use my wrench to go up here to the top of the machine and secure it in place. Uh, at first, actually, I'll be able to mostly hand tighten it. Okay, and once it gets hand tight, 
I'm going to put my wrench on. And at this point, I need to reach over here. This is the brake. This brake keeps this from turning. And so as I hold the brake, I can turn my wrench, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Okay, we're going right in this, in this instance. You don't need to get super tight. You don't need to be Hercules. Uh, you just need to get it snug in there. So now we're ready to start the procedure to actually find our zeros uh, for our part so that in the future when we put a bit in here, it will know uh, where it's starting and where it needs to go. All right, hopefully I have this set up so you're gonna be able to see the magic happen yourself. So here's the end of my edge finder. Here's my part in the vise and I'm going to slowly crank my vise up while this spindle is running uh, so that I can carefully move it in, step it in toward my part and find my edge. So uh, it's gonna be a little noisy here. I'm gonna turn the machine on and I'd just like you to watch the edge finder as it approaches this and we'll see when we find our edge. So first I have to bring my vise up toward the edge finder. Okay, and now I'm moving down my X axis toward the part. Okay, I'm pretty close now. I'm actually going to I'm actually going to increase the spindle speed here um, uh, to about 800 RPM. So it's probably going to get a little louder still, uh, but that's going to help us get a, a better reading uh, for our edge finder. All right, so watch for this to kick out when it touches the edge. There it went, did you see it? Okay, so now I mean, I'm going to step back just a little bit. There we go. And at this point, I will press, so here's, this is where we are right now, according to the machine. I need to press my X zero to zero out my number. Um, now, are we done yet? No. In fact, what we need to do is step this in another 0.25. Uh, and the reason, the reason we're going to do that is because with this being a half inch edge finder, we're going to step in half the value of its diameter so that when we have a bit in here, it's perfectly over the corner of this piece. Because as you can see here, there we go. If we were to put a bit in right now, that bit would actually be, I don't know, about a quarter inch away from the edge of our material. And then it's not going to uh, be where we want it to be uh, regarding our blueprints when we start inputting values so that it can make so it can drill its holes or make its cuts. So let me now lower this, okay? Just below, just, uh, so the edge finder is now above the material. I'm gonna go over here, back to my X axis. I will now bring it up to 0.25. Again, half the uh, diameter of, oh, of the edge finder. It gets pretty sensitive here. It's not easy to get it, oh, okay, it's not easy to get it exactly perfect. So now when I hit zero, I actually am at my correct zero value for X, okay? So now we'll repeat the same for Y.
And there we have it. So now we can see that if I move my values, I'm not sure if I'm close enough to the camera to show you this. If I move my, both of my values to zero, I should be directly above the bottom left corner of my part uh, so that my bit, when I put it in there, will be exactly, uh, will know exactly where it's supposed to be to find all of my places where I need to drill holes. So let's go to zero and see if I got it. All right, and we're looking good. So as you can see, the spindle is directly over the corner of the part so that when I put my bit in, it's going to know exactly where its starting point is so that if I tell it to walk over 0.25, it'll know to go over an eighth of an inch. And then if I tell it to go in a half inch, it'll know to go right there. 